him and burneth up the, his enemies round about. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Hallelujah. Kind of reminds me of that scripture that says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. His lightnings enlighted the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness. And all the people see his glory. Hallelujah. Confounded. Be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols, and worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of the judgments of our Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Hallelujah. Thou art exalted far above all gods. Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of the saints. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. Hallelujah. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Why don't we lift our hands again and give him praise. We worship you, mighty God. We praise you this morning. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. You are our shield and our buckler today, God. You are our way maker and our provider. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done this morning. Let the glory of the Lord fill this house. Touch every heart, touch every soul. Bless our song service today. Bless the preaching of the word. Bless our Sunday school classes, we pray. Let your name be exalted, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise today, God. Not our will, but thine be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Tabars is coming to lead us in song. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. Hallelujah. Our God is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lamb who was slain, He's alive forever. He's alive. They crucified him on Calvary, but he rose in victory. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, power in his hands. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive, he's alive, with all power in his hands. The Lamb who was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him on Calvary, but he was in the Hallelujah, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hands. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Come on, somebody celebrate. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, with all power in his hands. One more time. The Lamb who was slain. Oh yes. He's alive. Oh hallelujah. Put it. He shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him on Calvary, but he was in victory. Yes, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hands, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive, he's alive, with all power in his hands, he rolled 
Jesus, in glory, with all power, all power and, authority. and authority, he conquered, he conquered my, enemy. my enemy, he put he them under my feet, he, he runs in glory, with all power, all power and, authority. and authority, he conquered, he conquered my, enemy. my enemy, he put them, he put oh, them under my he's alive, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power, power in his hands. Yes, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hands. He rose in, in glory. With all power and authority. He conquered my enemy. He put them under my feet. He rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemy. Put them. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in him. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in His hands. Blessed be Your name. In the land that is plentiful, when the stream in abundance flow, blessed be Your name. Blessed be Your name. When I found in a desert place, through a walk to the wilderness, blessed be your name. Hallelujah! Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in love, sin I will I say, say blessed be the name Hallelujah. of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name. Sun is shining down on me. When the world's all that it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When the road mark is suffering, in the Blessed be your name. Come on, somebody sing. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. Blessed be the name of 
Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. To give, to give and take away. Yes, to give and take away. My God will My choose, to choose to say, Lord bless me. Blessed be your be name. Your name. You, you give, give and take I'll away. Take away. You give and take, take away. Thank you, Jesus. My heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, share the abundance of Messiah. There is nobody like you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody bless his holy name. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love, Come on, somebody say no, no place. place I'd rather be. I would rather be. No place I'd rather be. No other place. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love. Here in your love. No place, no place I'd rather, rather be. be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Set the fire, set the fire down in my soul that I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you. I want more. I want more of you. Set the fire. Set a fire down in my soul. That I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you. I want more. I want more of you. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. I want more of you. Somebody lift your hands and say, set the fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. No place I'd rather be. Come on, somebody from the bottom of your heart. No place I'd rather be. Oh, take this opportunity to say the Lord. There is no other place I would rather be. But here in your love, no place I'd rather be. There is no other place I'd rather be. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No place I'd rather be. The King's love. Hearing your love, set a fire, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more, I want more of you. I want more of you. Set a fire, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I can't control. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Come on, somebody lift your hands and say, I want more of you. Just 
Yes, I want more. I want more of you. Yes, I want more. I want more of you. I want more of you. Yes, I want more. I want more of you. Yes, I want more. I want more of you. Yes, I want more. Oh, I want more of you. Oh, even though the world is suffering so much stuff, but I want more of you. Yes, I want more. I want more. Come on, somebody connect to the Lord this morning. I want more of you. Yes, I want more. Yes, I want more of you. I want more. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Can you see this from the bottom of the car? How great is our God? How great, oh, how great is our God? Sing it with me. And all who see how great, how great, how great is our God. Is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The splendor of our King. The splendor of our King. Glory and majesty. Sit with me and tremble at his voice. At his voice. Tremble at his voice. Somebody said, How great it is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All we see.
sing how great is our God hallelujah how great is our God hallelujah how great is our God sing it with me sing with me Let all your voices ring unto heaven. Let the Lord hear your praise today. Our God is great. He is greatly to be praised. I lift you up. I bless you. I magnify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. How great you are, Father. I said you need to lift him up. You need to open your mouth this morning. You need to shout praises to your God today. You need to get a hand in the air and say, thank you, Lord. You've been good to me. 
how great you are. I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my provision. I thank you for your power in my life. I'm grateful for the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You're my protector. You're my way maker. You're my provider. I'm going to lift my voice and give you praise today, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I want to tell you, signs and wonders and miracles happen when the people of God begin to praise Him. When we begin to exalt Him. When we begin to give Him thanks for what He's done. When we begin to magnify His holy name. All of a sudden, an atmosphere of praise begins to erupt in the house of God. And the glory comes down and the power comes down. I said, when you praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I guess I guess I'm just gonna do a little bit of plowing this morning. It's Sunday morning. You've just rolled out of bed. I know you're a little groggy this morning, but guess what? Most of you had Saturday off. And you've got here today. And we've come to praise Him. We've come to lift Him up. We've come to magnify Him. Hallelujah. 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 And I want to tell you that God has all power. God has exactly what you have need of today. All right, let me put it to you another way. There's going to be thousands in sports stadiums all across America today. And I saw an advertisement the other day when they began to talk about their team. The word worship came up there. They are literally worshiping their God. We may not bow down to idols, but we certainly worship some other stuff. Amen. So we at the family of God today need to worship our God. We need need to let all hell know who our God is today. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is the great I Am. He is our healer and our way maker. Hallelujah. There is no other God besides Him. Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we praise you. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise today. Blessed be your holy name. Praise God, praise God. I'm glad to know that my God is a healer. Amen, when the doctor can't do any more for you, God is able to come on the scene and make a way out of no way. Anybody ever had God heal your body? Lift a hand and shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God's a healer. The healer's in the house today. Somebody shout amen. Amen. We're going to go before him in prayer this morning. And we want to give God thanks. Sister Rosemary is back with us this morning. We've been praying for her. Amen. God bless her. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Donna Walters is with us. And if you didn't know, she was in a car accident this past week. Amen. God's kept his hand on her. Amen. Sister Donna, come on down. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Sister Grant's requesting prayer for her nephew today. Sister Pitter went home from the nursing home. Amen. She's doing much better. To God be the glory. Sister Kay's in the house today. Amen. Many of you have been sick and afflicted with the flu, but we know God is able to heal you today. If you want prayer for your body, come down to the front. We're going to anoint you and pray the prayer of faith over you. We're going to ask God to meet all these needs in Jesus' name. 
Lift your voices and let's lift him up today. Father, in the name of Jesus, it's not by our might, it's not by our power, but it's in the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. I pray for Sister Donna this morning. Let the healing virtue of the Lord flow through this body. Lord, I rebuke all pain and all suffering. You said by your stripes we are healed. I command healing into this body. I command strength this morning. Not by our might and not by our power, but in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bring health. Bring strength. Meet every need this morning, God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. We serve a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the God. Jesus is the God we serve. Oh, yes, he is. Jesus is the God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God. Jesus is the God we serve. Angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. Jesus is the God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, somebody say it one more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, for the Lord to have his way. The glory of the Lord is coming down. Oh, coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray, for the Lord to have its way. The glory of the Lord is coming down. I call him Jesus, my rock. I call him Jesus, my rock. I call him Jesus, my rock. Oh, Jesus, my rock, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, I call him Jesus, my rock. Sing it again. I call him Jesus, my rock, I call him Jesus, my rock, I call him Jesus, my rock. Oh, Jesus, my rock, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Jesus, my rock. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Makes no difference what they say. I'm going down on my knees and pray. I'm going to wait, wait right here until he comes. 
I call him Jesus, my rock, I call him Jesus, my rock, I call him Jesus, my rock, oh Jesus, my rock, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, I call him Jesus, my rock. Lift your voices and give him praise. You're my rock today, God. You're my sword and my shield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God is the victor. Jesus is the victor. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So good to be in the house of the Lord. Feel his power and his presence this morning. Why don't you turn around, greet one another. Great to have all of our first time guests with us today. God bless you for coming to Cross Creek this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us make our way back to our seats this morning. My, my, haven't we had a time of worship in the house this morning? Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated this morning. We want to take the time to inform you of all the current events that are happening right here at Cross Creek. Amen. God has blessed us and is doing great things in our city. And we are so blessed to be a part of this body of Christ. Amen. Keep in mind that this Thursday will be Thanksgiving and we are hereby canceling our Thursday evening service so that you can be home with your families and give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We just finished and wrapped up our last session of the PI uh, Purpose Institute classes and we are now for open for enrollment for next semester. Uh, please see Brother Vogler or Pastor or myself for more information and you can also go on to our website crosscreekac.com and click on the Purpose Institute link and it will lead you to the place where you can enroll for next semester classes. Amen. Praise God. Also, uh, in December, we will be having our annual Christmas banquet. Amen. And that banquet will be on December the 13th at 6 p.m. You can see Sister Bleedy for more information and for purchasing your tickets. Amen. Excited for our Christmas banquet. We always have a wonderful time. Games, food, fellowship, and a word. Amen. I believe that God's going to bless us as we uh, look and honor Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Also, the Sunday School Department is having, if you purchase some orders for their bake sale, they will meet you outside after service today. Uh, you can pick up those orders. Um, registration, as I said, for Purpose Institute opens on January. Uh, classes, classes actually begin January the 8th, and you can also go online and register for that as well. Amen. Uh, and then in January, we are looking forward to a time of instruction and insight from uh, Brother Pope. He is going to be coming and speaking to us in the month of January. And you can find all of the announcements, everything in our bulletin that will be posted up front at our front desk in the main lobby. Amen. Praise God. God is doing many mighty things amongst us, is he not? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I'm excited for even next year. 
for God to impart a purpose and direction for our church and for us to be used in our city. Amen. Praise God. Let us go before the Lord this morning. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering. Ask our ushers to come this morning. Would you stand with us? We're going to ask the Lord to bless this gift as we give unto him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for bringing us together this morning, God, for your hand of protection upon our lives. We know, Lord God, that you have blessed us tremendously, Lord, and I'm praying today that you would allow us to be a blessing in the lives and the, in the hearts of the people in our city, O oh God. Lead us, guide us, and direct us. Let every gift, every dollar, every penny, Lord, be sown into your kingdom to reach the lost, I pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. As they sing, would you march and come and give your offering this morning? Keep and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and run it over again. And it will come back to you when you give, you give to the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over again. And it will come back to you when you give, you give to the Lord. Give it, love, give it, faith. With the joy and the smile on your face Give as the Lord has given to you How to give is a reflection of your gratitude So give and it will come back to you Good measure, press down, shake it together and run it number Give and it will come back to you When you give to give to the Lord from your heart give your best give unto God and you will be blessed don't be sick don't be tired learn from the widow in the Bible who can give life so give and it will come back to you good measure press down shake it together and Run it over again, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. So give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over again, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. When you give, you give to the Lord when you give, when you give, you give to the Lord. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, hallelujah! Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, Lord. I want. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. Yes, to see you higher lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. See you higher lifted up. Hallelujah. Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power, out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes, open the eyes of my heart I want to see you 
I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. 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 I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. 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 I as we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up High and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Hold out your power and love Hold out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Hold out your power and love Hold out your power and love as, As we, we sing holy, 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 holy To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pull out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Come on, somebody lift your hands Sing holy, holy, holy Yes, you are holy, holy, holy You are holy, Lord Holy, holy I want to see you. You are holy, Lord. Yes, you are. Holy, 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 holy. You are holy, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you one more time. Holy, 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 holy. You are holy, holy, holy. your hands and your voices and give him that praise this morning hallelujah you are holy father you are righteous today i want to see you father have your will have your way in my soul i pray i love you this morning lord and i give you thanks for all your goodness and all your mercy hallelujah hasn't the lord been good to us church Why don't you just turn to your neighbor and shake somebody's hand and say, God's been good to me. God's been good to me. My God's been good. Hallelujah. Have your Bibles this morning. I want to read two portions of Scripture. And I'm going to throw the sound room into a frenzy back there. But I'm going to start with Philippians 4.19. And then we're going to read Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. I can't help but think as we begin to enter into this Thanksgiving week. And truly, I hope that all of your homes are blessed by the goodness of the Lord and hallelujah, and that you enjoy one another's fellowship this week. 
But after all, when you really go back when Thanksgiving was first founded, what was it all about? It was about giving God thanks. They thank God for His blessings. They thank God for His provisions. Hallelujah. And I just hope that we don't just get caught up in eating some turkey and some vegetables and just calling it a day to kick back and do nothing. But I pray that you'll take the time to go around your dinner table and say, let each one in your family give God thanks for something that he has done in their life. Hallelujah. Because truly without him, we are nothing. And I know some of you are looking forward to Black Friday, but Thanksgiving isn't about Black Friday. Hallelujah. Praise God. Stop and give God thanks. Because truly God has been good. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, the scripture says, But my God, everybody say, my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall, not maybe, but shall, supply all your need according to his riches and glory. I think you need to say it again. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Now give him a clap offering of praise. He didn't say he might do it. He said he shall do it. It's going to be so. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Say give, and it shall be given. So I want to preach to you a little bit this morning about are you blessed or are you stressed? Are you blessed or are you stressed? I thought about asking for a show of hands, but that would incriminate some of us this morning. So let's just lift our voices and our hands one more time and ask God to bless us today. Father, we're grateful for your power, your presence in our lives. I ask for your anointing to rest upon us, O Lord. Touch me as your servant this morning. Let me be the voice and the oracle that you have called me to be. Let your word find a lodging place in our hearts. Bless your people today, I pray. Hallelujah. And let your peace be upon them. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say, Amen. You may be seated this morning. So again, I ask you today, are you blessed or are you stressed? Hallelujah. I hope you're blessed today. Because I don't believe that it's God's will for you to be stressed. I'm going to say that again. I said, I don't believe it's God's will for you to be stressed. Because he said, cast all your cares upon him for he careth for you. He said, he's the peace that passes all understanding. In his presence is fullness of joy. Can I get an amen in here? We need to be reminded today that if we know Jesus and Jesus is Lord of our lives, that we are blessed. But some of you are stressed regardless if you have Jesus or not. But if you're stressed, you're carrying around baggage that he never intended for you to carry. Somebody say amen. Amen. I want to talk to us today about an attitude of giving. Some of you just tuned me out right then. 
But this is what God laid on my heart, so I'm going to follow the leading of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Because whether we want to admit it or not, we all have an attitude about giving. I could tell you a joke, amen, and I won't take the time to do it, but basically it's about taking up the offering and, and uh, the dollar bill says he's the only, the only place he's ever gone in the world is to church. We're good at giving the dollars. We're not too good at giving the tens and the twenties and the bigger ones. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. But giving is a God-ordained principle. Amen. If you don't say amen, then I'm going to know that I'm preaching to you. So if you want to get uncomfortable, go ahead and get on. We're all uncomfortable. Anytime the preacher talks about your money, you get uncomfortable. So I'm just going to tell you up front, I'm going to talk a little bit about your money today. Because some of us are stressed because we're not obeying the biblical principles of the word. God didn't intend for you to be stressed, but he said, give and it shall be given unto you. He said, heaped up, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Now, most of us don't have so much we don't know what to do with. Hello. If you don't know what to do with it, I can tell you where to put some of it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In the offering basket. Praise God. Anybody not breathing in here this morning? Didn't see one hand go up. But every time we take a breath, there is a giving and a receiving. Every breath, we would all agree, is given to us by God. So every time you breathe, there's a giving and there's a receiving. When we talk about the farmer, the farmer doesn't go out and say to the ground, grow. Grow some corn, grow some tomatoes, grow some cabbage or whatever, beans. He doesn't just look at the ground and say, grow. He knows that there has to be some seed put in the ground if he's ever going to expect a harvest. If you plant a garden, you don't go out to your garden and just say, come on, garden, grow. The only thing that's going to grow is weeds. Come on, lighten up a little bit. <laughs> Praise God. So the farmer plants the seed and he expects a harvest in return. If he plants corn, he doesn't expect tomatoes. Amen? Hallelujah. So it is necessary for the farmer to give in order to receive. Hallelujah. When we're in prayer... The Bible tells us to ask, and we shall receive. Amen? If we don't ask of God, we shouldn't expect to receive anything of God. Amen? The point I'm trying to make is from the very scripture there in Luke that says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Amen. The point is, we need to give God something in order for him to multiply something in return to us. Hello? I said, you got to give God something in order for him to return something to you. It's not my word, it's his word. It's not my principle, it's his principle. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, giving... It's the very nature of God. Giving is a characteristic of God. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. 
his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The reason we are here, part of the reason we are here, is to say, God, I want to go to heaven. Amen. I don't want to perish with the ungodly. Hallelujah. I'm so glad we would all raise our hands and we would all give God thanks that our, he brought us out of the miry clay and set our feet on a solid rock. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for picking me up when I was down. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for providing. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me. I want to tell you, every person in this building has been blessed by God. Whether you know it or not, God has blessed you. We are blessed today. We are blessed not because of who we are or what we got in our bank account, but we are blessed because we know him. We know him in the power of his might. Hallelujah. We know it not just about him, but we have a revelation of him. We have an experience with him. And God has endued us with power. And God has put his spirit down on the inside of our life. That's why we don't have to worry when times get bad. That's why we don't have to, amen, be all stressed out. Because he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go with you all the way to the end of the world. God is with you. God is your help in a time of trouble. God is your refuge. God is your strength. God is your healer. Somebody ought to hear it today. He's your source. God is your source today. Hallelujah. Your job and your employment is not your source. Your ability is not your source. But Jesus Christ is your source today. Somebody ought to give him praise. Thank you, Lord. So the very nature of God is giving because he's the one that first gave that we might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross that I might have life and that I might have it abundantly. Thank you for your blood that was shed. Hallelujah. That cleanses me and washes me and sanctifies me. For without that shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. Hallelujah. We need to thank God on a daily basis that our sins are forgiven, that our sins are washed away, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Giving satisfies your soul. When you see somebody in need and you go and you do something good for somebody, don't you feel good about it? Amen. I do. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Somebody truly in need and you bless them and how appreciative they are. So the, the, the giver is blessed and the receiver is also blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it is when you give to the church, you're blessed for your giving and the church is blessed for the receiving of your gift. Amen. The church wouldn't be here without your giving. Let me just be real. These lights don't, the power company still sends us a bill every month. Amen. You don't think about it a whole lot, but you, you let me know when you're too hot in church and you let me know when you're too cold in church and you let me know when the sound's too loud and you let me know when you can't hear and you let me know when you're uncomfortable in your chairs. Hello? I hear all that stuff, but guess what? All that stuff didn't get here just by saying, poof, here it is. Somebody has to pay for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like you got bills at home, the church has bills too. And it's because of your giving and it's because of your sacrifice. And it's because of your, can I say it this way, obedience to the word of God that the lights stay on, the doors stay open, and the heat and the air condition still run. You're here this morning in a comfortable situation because you have given to the Lord. And God has in store not only blessed us with a beautiful building and comfortable surroundings, but God has has blessed us with his power God has blessed us with his anointing God has blessed us with his spirit we've got a lot to be thankful for this morning it's not just dollars and cents all the time but God's healed your body that's a blessing God's opened the door that's a blessing God's provided for you that's a blessing hallelujah God's given you the Holy Ghost that's a blessing 
Thank you, Lord. You've been good to me. Hallelujah. We don't like to talk about it a whole lot, but there's 2,300 references to your money and your possessions in the Bible. Compared to only 500 verses about prayer. You think your giving and your money isn't important to God? 2,300 scriptures about your giving or about money and possessions and 500 about prayer. Now, we would all shoot our hands up and say, we can't survive in this Christian walk without prayer. Prayer is the very oxygen that a believer runs on. Hallelujah. We need prayer. We have to have prayer. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. But I want to let you know, not only is prayer important, but your giving is important. Hallelujah. Praise God. 500 references to prayer. Hallelujah. So I want to try to tell you this morning, your time, your talent, and your resources are important to God. See, I'm not just talking about your money. I'm talking about your time. Some of you will give your money, but you won't give your time. But the scripture says he wants all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Come on, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm still in the book. You can read it up there on the screen. I said, I'm still in the book. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, give us all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. Hallelujah. So when we give all to God, that includes our time, our talent, and our resources. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our time, our talent, and our resources. And so what is giving? Giving is a reflection of our obedience. Hello. To the word of God. Jesus instructed us, give and it shall be given unto you. Now you can't say that's a doctrine of the church. You can't say that that's the preacher. That's the, hey, Brother Overton. Amen. The Lord himself said, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. Guess what? God doesn't lie, does he? Amen. Amen. All right, you're all, you're all tensed up and you're all worried this morning. Guess what? I'm not taking up another offering. So he's up on me this morning. But the Lord impressed me that our church needs to hear this. Some of you are wondering why you're stressed. I'm going to tell you why you're stressed. Because you've cut off the flow of God's goodness to you. Because you refuse to give and God's cut off your supply. If you don't give, it's not going to be given unto you. Amen. There's a story about a, a pastor. He attempted a record-breaking missions offering by... <laughs> I thought about doing this. Praise God. Wiring all the pews with electrical current. <laughs> he then asked the question during the service... How many was willing to pledge $100 towards world missions? And he pressed the button. He said, the buzzer was pressed with shocking results. He said, dozens immediately stood to their feet in an unprecedented response to his plea. He did say, however, it was also noted that several hesitant members were electrocuted. <laughs> I've often thought there's some... <laughs> The only way for me to get some of you to shout or to lift up a hand or to do anything is to press an electrical current to you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So let me just say this this morning. Our giving to God and obeying the scripture, amen, and stewardship is not fundraising. Now, I'm not against our Sunday school department does fundraising, but fundraising will never pay the bills of the church. At least I've never seen it do that. It'll help out. Amen. But God never ordained fundraising to take the place of stewardship. God expects our time, our talent, and our resources to be given to him, to give him glory, to give him honor, and to honor his word. Amen. We give glory to God when we honor his word. We give glory to God when we obey his word. Hallelujah. We give glory to God. Hallelujah. When we invest in the kingdom of God. The truth of the matter is this morning is the church is unable to provide a lot of needful ministries because people refuse to give. Amen. There's a lot of things that I would like to see this church do. I mean, we've talked about doing a food bank. We've talked about collecting clothes for those in need. We've talked about uh, building a second phase to our building program and putting educational, maybe a a daycare center and a youth center where our youth can come and hang out and play games, maybe uh, have a basketball court and all that kind of thing so they can play, amen, and, and we can also use it for other functions like wedding receptions or even youth services or what Whatever it is, but there's a lot of different things that we as a local church would like to do that we're not unable to do because we barely get enough money from you all to pay the bills. Amen. So we're not able to provide a lot of different ministries because of the financial or the lack of the financial support. And when I Begin to think, I remember when we were building the church, I went back and I dug out some things and one of the, the propositions was, you know, we always say, well, I barely make it, I can't afford to give, but you know what, you'll go spend five bucks for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. And I began to add it up. If you took that same $5 or, or whatever it cost you and you saved it over a year, you could probably give four or $500 to the church if you just would change what you were drinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The point is we all have something to give if we want to give it. And, you know, you may, not, you may not be a Starbucks drinker, but maybe you're a McDonald's hamburger eater. <laughs> Think nothing about going through the drive-in and getting a hamburger and don't even give it second thought. Hey, Amen. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat. The point is, we all have something to give if we want to give it. Amen. Amen. I'm not against you having a hamburger. I'm not against you having a Starbucks. But don't leave God out of the equation. Amen. We need to first understand and acknowledge that God is the owner of everything that we have. Amen. I said God owns it all. Every good and perfect gift cometh down from our Father above. Hallelujah. Everything you have, the house you have, the car you have, the clothes you have on your back, the food on your table is a gift from Almighty God. Hallelujah. And we need to always remember that. We ought to always give him praise. You say, well, I work for it. Well, if he didn't give you the ability to work for it, if he didn't give you the education and he didn't open the doors for you, you wouldn't have what you have. Hallelujah. And somewhere along the line, I kind of just want to throw this in because, you know, we're good at saying, God, give me this and give me that and give me something else. But when's the last time you quit asking God to give you stuff and start praising him for what he's already done? Thank you for your blessing, God. Thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. 
The truth of the matter is it all belongs to him and we are merely stewards over what he has blessed us with. Amen. He's allowed us to be a steward in his vineyard, if you will. Hallelujah. Psalms 42 and 1, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The earth belongs to God. Hallelujah. I said the earth belongs to God. Everything on this earth belongs to God. He causes the sun to come up every morning. He causes the moon to come out every night. He put the stars in the air. Hallelujah. He gives us the breath of life to breathe. So every time you inhale and exhale, it's a testimony of the power and the glory of Almighty God. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten about you and God has not forsaken you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Hallelujah. God is with you this morning. You and I are children of the Most High God. We are privileged to be born into a royal priesthood. We have been called out of darkness into his marvelous life. He said, therefore, show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his life. We need to be excited. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes down from you. Without you, God, I can do nothing. But because of you today, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Everything belongs to him. And just as quick as he's given it to you, it can be taken away from you. Hallelujah. He said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So giving is a very characteristic of God. And let me say it this way. Giving is love in action. I said giving is love in action. Christ didn't just talk about it. He came and wrapped himself in flesh and dwelt among us. And he went to Calvary and he paid the penalty for our sin. It was love and action that took him to that cross. Hallelujah. Praise God. He gave that you might have life. He gave that our sins might be remitted. He gave that this world might not be our home. That we not, may not be chained and bound to this way or this system of living. So when we honor God with our giving, we're in a sense saying to God, I appreciate, God, what you have done for me. I appreciate, God, that you saved my soul. I appreciate, God, that you have provided for my household. I appreciate, God, that you have healed my body. I appreciate, God, that you made a way out of no way. I appreciate, God, that you got me out of that jam and you made a way when there seemed to be no way. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to thank him. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, God has been good. God has been good. So giving is, an ex, ex, giving is an expression of our love and appreciation towards our God. The truth of the matter, we all have a need to give. You can read about that in Matthew 10, verse 8. I'm not going to go there, but we have a need to give. Everyone has something to give. 1 Peter 4.10, every one of us has something to give. And God promises to respond to our giving. Read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 through 10. I'm not going to turn to all those scriptures for the sake of time. But the point is, God promises to respond to your giving. So Jesus said again, he said, give and it shall be given unto you. So the question becomes, not whether or not I should give. The question becomes... Amen. How much blessing do I want? Hello. How much blessing do we want? We all want the blessings. I know we do. Amen. So the question becomes, how much are you giving? 
Because God can't multiply something that you don't do. Multiplying zero is still zero. So how big is your God? How much do you want him to bless you? Going back to the farmer. The farmer doesn't just plant one or two kernels of corn in the ground. He goes and he digs up the whole field. He loads as many kernels as he can afford to buy. And he goes out and plants the whole field. And he expects a big harvest. So I'm asking you at the church today, how big is your harvest? How big is your field? What do you want God to bless you with? If you only plant $1 a week, only expect a $1 a week blessing. But if you plant $100 a week, you ought to expect a $100 blessing. Amen. Amen. Being a blessing and you will receive a blessing. Be a blessing to somebody. He said, give. Can I tell you, a stingy person receives nothing from God. I knew this was going to be a hard lesson to teach this morning. Amen. My point is, there must be an inflow and an outflow. I'm going to say it again. There must be an inflow and there must be an outflow. God didn't make you a spiritual sponge to just soak up in the church all the blessings of God. He expected when he filled you with the baptism of his spirit that you would go out and tell somebody how good he is. There was an inflow, but he expects an outflow. Hello. Hallelujah. I've said it many times. You don't have to go tell this world, amen, everything and be a walking Bible. You just need to go tell somebody what Jesus has done for you. Amen. God's been good to us. God's been good to us. Hallelujah. The point I'm trying to make, it's a principle of God. God responds to giving. I said, God responds to your giving. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. If you give him something to work with, he's going to multiply it in return to you. We don't give it to get, but it's just his principles of work. When you give to God, he gives in return to you. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. If you sow good things, if you sow plentiful things, if you sow enough seed, you can expect the crop to grow and there to be a harvest. Amen. But if you don't sow any seed, don't expect any blessing. Don't expect to have a harvest if you've never sown a seed. Everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God needs something to work with. I said, God needs something to work with. Now, he could have just spoke it all into existence like he did in Genesis. But he put the principle of sowing and reaping, giving and receiving in the word of God. And it is a testimony to you and I that if we give, we're going to receive. It's God's principle. It's not my principle. I'm trying to make that fact clear today. It is a principle of God. And God has never lied. And God will never lie. God will never fail you. God will never let you down. God always comes through. When you give to him, you're going to receive blessing in return. My example is the very first miracle that Jesus did. Marriage at Cana, hallelujah. He said, he said, go get me some bottles of water. 
We know the story. He turned the water into wine. But first, they had to go get the jars of water before he created the miracle. Amen. He needed something to work with. Hallelujah. He needed, hallelujah, something to work with. You're asking God for blessing. You're asking God to make way. You're asking God to provide. And he's saying, give me something to work with. Give me some bottles of water. Give me a vessel. Hallelujah, that I can pour something into. I'm willing to do what you want me to do, but you got to give me something to work with. When we read about the miracle of feeding the 5,000 with the loaves and the fish, he had to first the little boy's lunch and then he blessed the little boy's lunch and he fed the multitude of 5,000 or more with the little boy's lunch because he had something to work with. I'm trying to tell somebody, little is much when God is in it. I said little is much when God is in it. Maybe your giving seems insignificant. It isn't how much you give. It's obeying the word of God. It's obeying the principles of God and it's seeing God do miraculous things. God would, wants to do miraculous things. God wants to prove himself to you. God wants to bless you but you got to first give him something to work with. We read about the other miracles. The blinded eyes being open. There had to be a blind man for the blinded eyes to be open. The lame walked. Amen. Had to be a, a person that was lame before he could heal that person. Hallelujah. He cleansed the lepers. Amen. There had to be somebody that had leprosy before he could perform the miracle. Hallelujah. He even brought Lazarus back from the dead. But Lazarus had to die in order for him to come back to life. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you, my God doesn't fail. My God is a prayer answering God. My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. Give and it shall be given. Take him to task. Prove him. See what God will do. Stop living stressed out. Stop living in financial bondage. Stop living to, amen, listening to the attitudes of the world and obey the word of God. And when you obey the word of God, the blessing's coming, the power is coming, the deliverance is coming. God will not fail you. Hallelujah. I've heard people say, well... I've tried that, and it didn't work for me. Well, this story is for you then. John chapter 2, or chapter 21, verse 3. Simon says, Simon, we just preached about Simon. Simon Peter, he says, unto all them, he says, I'm going fishing. They say unto him, okay, we're going to go with you. So they went forth and they entered into a ship immediately. And that night, the Bible says they fished all night and they didn't catch anything. Sounds like some of us. Hello. Fished all night, they didn't catch nothing. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now, they could have sat there and argued with him. Hello. Don't you know, Master, that fish swim on both sides of the boat? The same fish on the left side going to be on the right side, and if there ain't no fish on the left side, there won't be any on the right side. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Some of y'all talk yourselves out of blessing. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. I'm preaching this morning. I'm preaching where we're living today. Hallelujah. I said some of us, we talk ourselves out of the blessings of God. But notice what they said. They didn't argue with him. They cast their nets therefore, and they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fishes. Amen. When you obey God, when you obey God, when you obey God, when you
you obey God, miracles and signs and wonders happen. Amen. It may not make a whole lot of sense, but if you'll just cast your net on the other side, if you'll just hear the word of the Lord, if you'll just do what Jesus said to do, guess what? He's going to multiply it. He's going to bless it. He's going to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing because he's a blessing God. Remember I said he went to Calvary because it was love in action. We say we love God. Well, if we love God, the scripture says, keep his commandments. One of the very first principles every young Christian needs to learn is obedience to the word of God. We don't like that word. We don't like anybody tell us what to do. But guess what? God's got some commandments and if you obey his word and do it his way blessings come blessings come blessings will come if you will obey the word because it's not my word it's his word it's not my principle it's his principle if you obey the word of God the blessing will come All right, I'm going to try to wrap it all up for all you naysayers this morning. (laughs) Praise God. Giving goes all the way back to the beginning. I don't have time to teach you lessons on hermeneutics of the Bible, but there's a, a principle called the first mentioned principle. And God will take a principle and he will begin to expound on it down throughout scripture. And amen. In the very first place it's mentioned in the word of God is called the first mentioned principle. Amen. So I'm going and I'm taking you all the way back way back to Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 and 5. It's a first mentioned principle. The story of Cain and Abel. Amen. In verse 3 of chapter 4, it says, In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel's Unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was raw and his countenance fell. The point being is that God, amen, accepted the offering of, of, of Abel. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because Abel brought a blood sacrifice. Hallelujah. I don't have time to teach you a lesson on this. Amen. Cain, amen, just had a careless attitude and he brought the fruit of the ground. I'm supposing it to be vegetables and crops that he had grown. But God required a blood sacrifice. Why did God require a blood sacrifice? Because later in scripture it will say without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. Hallelujah. It takes a blood sacrifice to wipe away your sins. Hallelujah. And we know what that sacrifice was. It was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. It was Jesus Jesus on the cross of Calvary he shed his life he gave his blood that we might have life and have it abundantly the principle goes all the way back to Cain and Abel God required a sacrifice and they it wasn't just any old thing that I wanted to come they had to bring their best amen they had to give God their best amen and they couldn't just give God whatever they wanted to give it was he required a blood sacrifice Hallelujah. And when you, oh, and then he said to Cain, he says, Cain, if you, he gave Cain a second chance. He says, if you bring the proper kind of sacrifice, will it not be accepted? He says, I'll give you a second chance. But Cain just got mad and stomped away. Because he wanted to do it his way. Amen. Very first mentioned principle. After that, we go to Genesis chapter 8 and verse 20. Hallelujah. We know the world was consumed by a flood. And after the the ark had landed, it says in verse 20, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and 
took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Noah offered God a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Praise God. Noah offered God a sacrifice. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see again a second mention principle here that God accepts Noah's offering because it was the correct kind of offering. Amen. Then we come on down to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 7. It talks about Abraham. Abraham was promised that he was going to be the father uh, of a great nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Abraham didn't know what it was all about, but God told him to get out of where he was and that he was going to give him as far as his eye could see. So God took him up on a, on a mountainside or a hillside and he looked over the land of Canaan and it was, it was plus. Amen. It was a good fertile soil. And God promised Abraham that he was going to give him a promised land. And he gave him Canaan. Amen. And in verse number 7 of Genesis 12, he says, And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give thee this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who had appeared unto him. A third mention. Amen. Another principle of scripture. Hallelujah. Then we come on down to Genesis chapter 14 in verse 20. Amen. And we know that God blessed Abraham and God multiplied his flocks and God bestowed upon him good things. Amen. And so the Bible tells us in Genesis 14 and 20, it says, hallelujah, and blessed them. Amen. Abraham, he paid his tithes to Melchizedek. He blessed the most high God which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And Abraham, it says, and he gave him tithes of all. Hallelujah. Abraham, amen, before the Mosaic law. This is in the book of Genesis. The principle started with Cain and Abel. It came down to Noah. And now our father Abraham, the father of faith, God instills in him the principle of paying his tithes unto the priest. Hallelujah. The priest who was Melchizedek. And Abraham gave him tenth. Or a tithe of all. Doesn't stop there. You can come on down to Jacob at Bethel. Amen. Jacob wrestled with the angel all night. In verse 22 he says. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me. I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Hallelujah. I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you, some of you have expressed to me, amen, that paying your tithes, amen, and offerings is an Old Testament principle and that we are in the New Testament church and we do not have to pay our tithes. Well, first of all, it's not paying tithes. It's giving tithes. Amen. If you don't give it freely, if you don't give it willingly, you might as well not give it. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you will obey the principle of God and God said I love a cheerful giver not one that gives begrudgingly not one that doesn't want to give it but if you will give to God your tithe and your offering hallelujah you can expect God to open up the windows of heaven you can expect God to pour you out blessings that you're not able to contain it's not my word it's the word of the Lord this morning hallelujah so what am I saying I'm saying amen Cain and Abel or hallelujah Abel paid his tithes Noah paid his tithes Abraham paid his tithes. Jacob paid his tithes. And it was all before the Mosaic law. So those that want to say that was Mosaic law and it was under, amen, the, 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 the law of, uh, uh, there's three Mosaic principles of law there, but ceremonial law. All that want to say that it was a ceremonial law, they don't know their Bible because God established the tithe way before the Mosaic law was ever given to Moses. I'm going to bring it home. Go to the New Testament. Well, it's not in the New Testament. Oh, okay. Jesus understood the importance of tithes. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 23, he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! Ye pay tithes of mint and anise, and come in and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. He says, These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Jesus didn't say don't pay your tithes. 
He said, you should pay your tithes, but you should know disregard love and mercy and kindness and goodness and faith and all this. Jesus reestablishes the tithe in the New Testament. Praise God. Hallelujah. We come on down to the apostles in Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, 44. The Bible says, And they that believed were together and had all things common, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to men as every man had need. Amen. Goes on down, verse 34 of that same chapter. Chapter 4, he said, Neither was there any among them that lacked for many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and brought the prices of their things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So I had one professor tell me, he said, Well, if you don't want to pay your tithes, then go sell everything you're ha you have and lay it at the apostles' feet. Because that's what the New Testament church did. They sold everything. The good news is God's not asking you to go sell your house and give up everything you have. He's just asking you for a principle. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16 and 1, Paul writes and he says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring you. Your liberality unto Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem had needs. Amen. And so Paul said, on the first day of the week, lay aside a portion. Amen. That we might minister or give to the needs of the saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All I'm trying to say this morning is some of us, we're, we're constantly asking God for blessings. And we're asking God for miracles. And we're asking God to do things. Hallelujah. But we don't obey his principles. Amen. We might as well not expect God to bless us and open the windows of heaven if we're stingy with him. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want the blessings of God, you got to give God something to work with. Somebody say amen. I said if you want the blessings of God, you got to give God something to work with. Hallelujah. Don't lay it up down here. In fact, Matthew chapter 6 verse 19, he says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is. Where's your treasure this morning? Is it in your bank account? Is it in how much you can buy? Is it in more stuff that you can get and fill the closet and the garage and buy a shed and put more stuff in and heap to yourself a bunch of junk? I'm here to tell you, it's all going to burn up one day. We need to lay some treasure up on the other side. We need to invest in the kingdom of God. We need to put God to the test and see if God won't open the windows of heaven. In fact, Malachi says that. He says, prove me. And he, the only place I know in scripture that says, prove me, test me, try me. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you're not able to contain. Come on, clap your hands to him. Rejoice in him. Praise him. The Lord is good. I said, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. He's a blessing God. I said, my God is a blessing God. Hallelujah. How could you ever repay God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? How could you ever thank God enough for what he's already done? How many times has he healed your body? How many times has he made a way where there seemed to be no way? How many times has he made your enemies to be at peace with you? How many times has he shadowed you with blessing and pour you out goodness and mercy and love and tender kindness? Hallelujah. How many times have you laid your head down at night and God has given you peace that passes 
passes all understanding. I'm here to tell you, we serve a good God. We serve a righteous God. We serve an on time God. We serve a God that does what he says. Hallelujah. The point is today, who are you going, who is your source? Are you your source or is God your source? God's my source today. I said, God is my source today. When I give God my best, he gives me his best. Hallelujah. He said, try me. Try me. So for those of you that want to say the church is just after your money, this is the first time I've preached about your money in in probably years. So don't say I get up here every day trying to shake you down for your money. (laughs) But I'm trying to give to you a principle. A principle that will bring blessing to your home and to your finances and to your family. Hallelujah. That if you'll put God first... And for those of you that don't know what a tithe is, a tithe simply means 10. 10%. This is going to make some of you choke. 10% of all your increase. All your increase. Not what you have left over after you pay the bills. He said he wants... A tithe, and that tithe is saying, God, I thank you for your blessing in my life. Can I tell you, God gives you 90% to live on. It's truth whether you want to receive it or not. God gives you 90% to live on to be the steward over. He asked you for the tithe, and he didn't just stop at the tithe because some of us are good at paying our tithes, but we don't give much in offerings. He said, bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. He said that there might be meat on my table, that there might be lights turned on, that there might be heat and air, that the mortgage may be paid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why God wanted me to teach this this morning. He did. I couldn't get, I tried to shake it. I hate talking about your money. But I can tell you one thing. I had a pastor that said, the day that your pocketbook and your wallet get sanctified is the day revival starts in the church. Because the last thing we want to part with is that almighty green dollar but I'm challenging you this morning to hear the word of God and to put God to the test because I know that if you do it God's way he said then I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and I'm going to pour you out blessing that you're not able to contain so my message today is instead of being stressed Why don't you make up in your mind, I'm going to be blessed. Instead of living in a world that's sucking it all away, put God's program to the test and be blessed of him. I'm going to tell you what, I've learned one thing, and you heard me say a little bit about it last week, but you can't outgive God. Hallelujah. It isn't how much you have, it's it's obeying the principle of God. (laughs) Hallelujah. If you got $10 and you give a dollar, then you've obeyed God. You got $100 and you give God 10, then you've obeyed God. You know, where most of us get problems is when we have $1,000 and I got to give God 100. You don't have to, but if you want to be blessed, put God to the test. Hallelujah. He's faithful, church. The question I'm asking today who do you trust? Do you trust yourself or do you trust the Lord? Amen. I'm going to say, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, 
We're going to serve the Lord. Stand with me this morning and lift your hands to heaven. Let's make a new declaration to God. In fact, why don't you just come on out of your seats and come down front. Let's make a new declaration to the Lord that, Lord, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. I'm going to serve you with all my mind. I'm going to serve you with all my soul. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, folks. Come on. Come on down. I don't know where the musicians are, but we're going to worship God. Amen. Father, we love you this morning. We're grateful for your work. Word. Hallelujah. Help us to be what you want us to be, God. I pray today, God, bless the gift and the giver. You said, give and it shall be given unto us. I pray that you would meet every need that's in this house. You said that you would rebuke the devourer, that you would pour out blessings upon your people. And I pray today, God, as we honor your word and we give unto you, oh Lord, open up the windows of heaven and pour out upon your people the blessings of the Lord. For truly we believe today that every good and every perfect gift does come down from you this morning. Let the glory of the Lord be upon us. Let your blessing be upon us. Let your will be done in us and through us this morning, God. Hallelujah. We pray not our will, but thine be done. Meet every need, God. Meet every need this morning. You said, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor is he begging for bread. Hallelujah. You said, ask and it shall be given. And seeking and we shall find and knock and it shall be opened unto us let your glory hallelujah be upon us oh God let your angels have charge round about us lead us and guide us in the paths of righteousness I pray Lord not our will not our will father but thine be done use me for your kingdom help me to be a vessel help me to be an instrument of righteousness God have your will, 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 have your will in the name of Keep Jesus. and he will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and run it over. Keep and he will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. And it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Give, and it will come back to you. Because when you give, you give to the Lord. Give it love, give it faith, give with the joy and a smile and your friends. As the Lord has given to you, how to give is a reflection of your gratitude. So give, and it will come back to you. Good measures, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord from your heart give your best give unto God and you will be blessed don't be stingy and don't be tired learn from the widow in the Bible who gave her last time give and it will come back Rest down, shake it together, and run it over, give, and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, rest down, shake it together, and run it over, give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord, oh, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, and shake it together, and run it over, give, and it will come back to you. When you give, to give to the Lord, Father. Love you, my heart is free.
fill with desire to see your power and glory cover the earth as the one is called the sea I am surrounded 